Okay. Everybody happy with being recorded? Yep. Jose's worried yes. about the legalities that we'll all finish up in jail if we don't um, get everybody's approval. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyway, this is Jose's seminar. We all know Jose very well. I'm really looking forward to it. This is um, something we've been discussing. We, uh, Jose and Steve and, uh, and Martin Piffner and um, <coughs> Langus meet weekly to discuss things. So uh, I'm very pleased that Jose's got a whole hour to himself to um, say what he wants to say. <laughs> very much looking forward to it. Okay, Jose, all yours. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, let me share the screen. <clears throat> well, I, I will start right away to uh, try to meet with the time that you um, uh, allow me. Uh, well, my presentation uh, is entitled, as you may see, how to make a fast diagnosis of a complex organization with organizational <clears throat> cybernetics, framework, and tools. Well, I'm speaking from Valladolid in Spain. So, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, I will try to, um, um, to uh, summarize the whole approach and the examples and the tools in the 45 minutes. So, this way I put the example of putting the ocean in a glass. I will try it once more. <laughs> and then, well, in the, the, the starting, I like to do it of uh, my presentations with, with this uh, quotation from uh, uh, Forrester. Forrester was the creator of the system dynamics uh, methodology in the late 50s and early 60s in the MIT in the United States. Uh, he was saying in 1986, the new frontier of humanity <clears throat> is not so much scientific or technological development as an understanding of the complex social systems. Complex social systems, that's, that's the focus of my uh, presentation and of the framework we are going to comment. Well, uh, first I will talk um, uh, very briefly about the kinds of complexity that we are going to handle uh, to uh, get into the framework. Uh, and finally, I will end up the presentation with a brief reference to the software and some example. Well, as I say, the challenge that humanity uh, is facing is a, a, a huge, huge. All of us are aware of the variety of problems, degradation of the environment, climate change, demographic transition, immigration, pressures on public finances, health, the problem of the coronavirus, the, the problem of the war, et cetera, et cetera. So we have all kinds of tremendous um, uh, problems uh, that, uh, on addition, they are interrelated. So we face a very complex um, reality. Within the systems thinking community, uh, we uh, think that we, uh, we, we need a systemic cybernetic approach to cope with this uh, kind of problems. This is our conviction. Uh, but having in mind the uh, um, derivation of the Conan Asby theorem uh, that uh, um, expressed in uh, alternative words to the, the original ones, we can say that the quality of the decisions. Uh, that the managers uh, do is limited by the quality of the models they use. And here is where we uh, think that the systems thinking may help. Uh, we will try to improve uh, those uh, models used by the decision takers. In particular, what we are going to comment is uh, models based on organizational cybernetics. Well, um, I mentioned the word complexity. There are many kinds of complexity, many classifications. <clears throat> we are not going to get into that because it's, 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 it's too long. Uh, I will only concentrate in these three specific types, dynamic, structural, and group decision-making complexity. This uh, third uh, group um, is the one that is more related to uh, how human beings um, communicate and take decisions, in particular in groups. So uh, to talk about the dynamic complexity, uh, the best thing is to show an example. Here we have a decision taker that takes the decision A to produce B, but as all of us are aware, uh, the final result is not going to be B, it's going to be Z after a time delay. Well, this is a feedback loop. By the way, this feedback loop is the core of the system dynamics uh, methodology. But reality is not made uh, of one feedback loop is made of many feedback loops. Uh, uh, so when this person uh, takes the decision A to produce B, in fact, what he is doing is activating a cascade of feedback loops with different time delays, whose outcome, uh, we can be almost sure that this uh, man is not, or, or woman, <laughs> they, they cannot imagine uh, what uh, has been the effect 
of the decision he took when we took the decision A. Well, this is dynamic complexity. By the way, this type of complexity is the one uh, that uh, system dynamics handles very well. So uh, there are many other approaches, but system dynamics is very um, specifically well suited to handle that. Well, we have here a, an example of dynamic complexity. Uh, we have an additional problem. Uh, uh, in addition to the problem of this cascade of effects, many of them probably harmful, uh, we have a, 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 an even maybe worse problem. And is that uh, if the effect and the cause are distant in time, we cannot learn. And this is bad. Because if we cannot learn, the experience serves to vary the mistakes we make. So this is a rather pessimistic conclusion. Uh, that we try to, um, to attack. Uh, so <laughs> we will try to see how can we avoid this tremendous uh, uh, situation. No? And this is where uh, uh, the systemic approaches uh, we think that may help not to solve it, but at least help in that point. The structural complexity, very briefly, uh, because I will um, come back to it uh, later on, uh, is the one that is related to the existence of organizations, the red circle in the middle, uh, organizations that contain organizations, that contain organizations, are contained in organizations, etc., etc. And in each of the organizations, we have um, the departments, sections, functions, um, jobs, persons, everybody, every, uh, all the elements interrelated. So this is the the structure of the, the issue at hand. This is what uh, I call a structural complexity. I will come back uh, to it. And the third group is the, uh, the decision-making complexity. Here I start with this uh, representation that everybody knows of the communication channel, where we can see the typical eight components that uh, the communication channel has, the center, the transducer, the channel, transducer, receiver, uh, in the, in the direction of sender towards the receiver. And if you are lucky, the feedback, if we are lucky and we succeed in completing the circle, uh, the, the, the loop, so the, the sender uh, can check if M8 is equal to M1. So if the communication really did succeed. So this is the communication channel. But we have an additional problem to this one. Uh, and is that uh, when the person with the left communicates something or tries to communicate something to the person with the right, uh, he sends the information, the, the, the communication channel as we just commented, but uh, the information, if it succeeds to come out of the channel correctly, complete, it still has to cross a number of cognitive filters until it reaches the conscience of the receiver and one that he reaches the conscious has to be interpreted with the mental models that the receiver has. And the mental models is uh, the result of the history of that human being. Mm -hmm. And then if he provides the feedback, the same way happens with the uh, answer that crosses and reaches the center and the same, in the same way, the, the, the feedback has to cross the filter, et cetera, et cetera. So this is mm, well, the, the reality of the communication uh, when we talk about the communication between two people. But if we have many people, the situation is uh, even more uh, complicated because the number of channels is not one. Uh, if we have n persons, the number of channels possible uh, if everybody wants to talk to everybody, is n times n, n minus one divided by two. Uh, if we have a group of 30 people, this means 435 channels, communications possible. And in the European Parliament, so no, 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 it's not strange that they have such a difficulty <laughs> to communicate, uh, is 248,000 channels. How can they communicate? Uh, this is in the first iteration. <laughs> if they want to, uh, once that everybody talk to everybody, of course, this is not uh, what they intend, no? but this has to give uh, the size of the problem. So this is the, the complexity in the communication. Well, to all these uh, three kinds of complexity, um, we have many approaches in the systems thinking field. We are not going to get into the schools. We just, uh, I just mentioned that we have many of them because as I said, I'm only going to concentrate in the um, organizational cybernetics. So I move on to the framework. Well, the framework 
Uh, as I say, it's based on the organization of the cybernetics. Uh, this is a methodology developed, uh, as all of us uh, uh, know, uh, by Staforbier uh, in the 70s and in the 80s. Uh, I put this picture because I think that is very important uh, in general, no? in particular for us. Uh, this picture was taken as vanilla that is there, uh, seeing it. <laughs> so when this picture was taken, it was taken in Valladolid when Stafford uh, was um, given the doctor, uh, doctorate honoris causa by the University of Valladolid. And uh, the, the curious uh, fact is that this uh, was the last speech that Stafford did because he was quite sick and months later he died, sadly. Uh, but the, 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 the interesting thing is that the paper that he has in the hands is the, is the paper that entitled What is Cybernetics? Uh, after this paper has been published in, in journals, etc. But this was the speech uh, at that time, the 21st of October, 2001. Well, here you have a link to the full conference to anybody that wants to see the, the ceremony. Just go to the link and see it. Well, let's move on to the framework. I structure the, the framework for applying organizational cybernetics in these four steps. Um, I have to mention that the, way, the, the reason why structuring this way in this sequence is because I consider that the first step is the, the most important one. And I consider that we should start in general we should start by this first step that is dedicated to clarify the identity and the purpose of our organization. Because if we don't have that clear, what kind of organization can we create? If we don't know what is our purpose, what are we going to design? It makes no sense. The second step is the creation of the vertical structure. I will explain in a second. That is how we divide the environment in sub-environments and the organization in sub-organizations. The third step is dedicated to checking that all the elements of the viable system model identifies as necessary uh, for the organization to be viable and meet the purposes. And the fourth step is dedicated to checking the degree of coupling at all recursion levels. Let's see briefly the content of them. Uh, first step, as I say, uh, identify the identity, what the organization is and what is not. And also what is the purpose? Having in mind that different observers may assign different purposes to the same organization. So the thing starts to get a little complicated. Once we clarify what is and what is not, we can set the boundaries of the organization. That means what belongs to the organization and what, what belongs to the environment. And in relation to the environment, we have to differentiate the present environment from the future environment. Uh, and in the environment, we have to identify the information sources, the sensors, the cadence for capturing information, the communication channels, and where the information that comes from the environment is going to be located, how, to whom, uh, inside the organization. This is something that has to be done in the first step. We are not talking yet about the uh, biosystem model or anything like that, just talking about the identity and the purposes. The second and third steps are dedicated uh, to um, um, trying to guarantee that the organization uh, will be able to cope with the complexity variety that has to meet. I talked at the beginning about the complexity of the problems uh, that the uh, organizations have to face. Uh, I propose doing that in using two dimensions. One is a vertical dimension uh, that is uh, consisting uh, dividing the environment in sub-environments, the organization in sub-organizations. Uh, this, this, by the way, this vertical division is named by Raúl Espejo, unfolding of complexity. He started to use it years ago. Uh, we divide the environment in sub-environments and the organization in sub-organizations, the, the, the sub-environment in sub-sub-environments, and so on. So we divide vertically the organization. So we create smaller organizations that have to cope with a smaller portion of the environment uh, with the hope that then they will be able to cope with the amount of variety that they have to face. This is the vertical um, dimension uh, of um, creating the structural, the structure of the organization. And the horizontal dimension is just picking up uh, the pairs of environment and organization and zooming in and checking inside it 
that all the elements that the viable system model indicates that are necessary um, to be present, we have to check that they are. Yeah? So this, this will be the third phase. So let's see the, 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 the help that we may have for doing the, the second step, this vertical unfolding of complexity. For doing this, I mentioned before that we could use different uh, recursion criteria of, of, of or points of view of the organization. Here, let's see our organization in the center, the red one. This organization, we can um, see uh, make this vertical division falling, in this case, recursion criteria uh, two, but we could use recursion criteria three or one. If we use the recursion criteria two, we get, a, let's say, a pipe <laughs> where we are unfolding and creating the organization, sub organization, sub sub organization, et cetera, at different recursion levels. But we could take recursion criteria three or recursion criteria one, and then we would get a different pipe, a different pipe, et cetera. So we can see our organization as the center of a sphere. It were uh, through the center crosses the um, several different dimensions uh, that are ways of seeing our organization. But the organization is one, is the system in focus. We have to have in mind when we study our organization that all these different perceptions may, may, be, uh, may be acting. Uh, for instance, a person belongs to the, uh, the, uh, the, the recursion criteria of the family, the recursion criteria of the, uh, the professional activities, the recursion criteria of the leisure activities or sport activities, etc. But the person is one. So when a person tries to plan his activity, uh, it is better that he has in mind that he has a family, that he has a job, that he has friends, etc., etc. All these dimensions have to be taken into account. Well, this is uh, the way um, uh, of, of making this vertical division. To help uh, to do that, uh, I propose to use this matrix that uh, I call it recursion levels, key factors matrix. This is a matrix where we have in the rows the recursion levels and in the columns, the relevant issues for each recursion level. Uh, if we have several recursion criteria, we would have several matrix. The thing starts to get complex. And to make it even more complex, when we are at a certain level of recursion, we may decide that it's convenient to change the recursion criteria and move to another universe, let's call it another universe. So we will be traveling um, in a multiverse <laughs> of different recursion. Well, this is the general case, of course, no? uh, for a normal study, we don't need such a sophistication, but it's interesting to know the general case. Well, uh, to navigate uh, through all this is quite complicated. So um, this was one of the reasons why we created the software. Uh, if we try to make these maps uh, in paper, it, it can get very cumbersome and very difficult. But in the software, is, as we are going to see, it's quite easy. It's just to uh, change uh, the, the, in the screen the, the, the recursion criteria, etc. Uh, the software that I, I will show at the end, uh, most of you already know it, uh, is available uh, to anybody for uh, use. It's free. Eh? So anybody that wants to use it may use it. Uh, well, for instance, here uh, with the use of the shower, this navigation through the this this um, different recursion criteria, we see how easy it is. We have here the matrix with the recursion levels, and on the right we have the recursion criteria. We just click on the recursion criteria that we want to uh, select, and we just move to that to that uh, new space. Uh, here we have the same image with in three dimensions. We have the uh, four recursion levels, two recursion criteria in the top, and we could change at, the, at any uh, position in the screen. So it's immediate. So uh, with the computer, it's quite easy. Well, the third step is dedicated uh, to um, checking for this pair organization environment that the organization has all the necessary components that the best viable system model indicates. Here we have the model. Uh, on the right, uh, on the bottom right. Uh, here are the three main components, the environment, the operations, and the management. Well, here, what we have to check is first that in any organization that I created, mm, all the elements first exist. Second, that they have the capacity to carry out its function. And third, that they do it. <laughs> so the three things we have to check. 
because we may have it, but they don't act. You know? So they, they, and, and then we have to do it for all, well, here I just will uh, remind that uh, for the case that uh, Somebody that is not familiar with here, we have the biosystem model with the, with the system one, with the system two, the system three, system four, and system five. Uh, just remember, system one does what is uh, uh, supposed to do the organization, the system two harmonizing the interactions between the operational units. In this example, uh, three operational units, one, one to three. The system three star is the auditing channel. The system three is the one that uh, handles the operative management, the here and now. The system four outside and future associated normally to strategic management. And the system five is the one that defines the identity and the purpose is normally associated to normative management. Well, these are the typical uh, five functions that everybody knows uh, so we can go and move on to the fourth step. The fourth step is to check that all these recursion levels that we have uh, created are coherent. So the identity defined at, at, at level zero for system five is coherent with the identity as it has to be present in the next level of recursion, in the next level of recursion, in, the, in all the levels of recursion. So the, the identities and the purposes have to be consistent through all the recursion levels. The same happens, well, here, for example, the recursion levels key factors matrix may help a lot to check that because we have the whole map of the whole structure where we can check that the purposes are, here we see an example that I will comment at the end. We have five recursion levels and the different purposes that appear at each recursion level, but all of the purposes have to be consistent. Uh, uh, at, at, at the level single buildings have to be consistent uh, with the level zero at the, at the starting of the, uh, the division. So this is the, the use, the power I think of the matrix because in just an image, we can check that all the structure of the whole organization, no matter how complex it is, we can check that this is, is more or less consistent. Well, in the same um, checking we have to do with the system force um, and all the systems at all recursion levels. Well, um, I just explained the framework very fast <laughs> due to the time restrictions. Uh, so anybody that is interested uh, can go to the books. Uh, the first one uh, written on the 208 is in Spanish and the, uh, the, in English, the English version updated is uh, the 212. Uh, there it is explained, uh, this framework with uh, a lot of detail. So anybody interested can go there and, and, and have a look to it. So the next aspect that I would like to comment and share with you is the, 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 the use of the pathologies. Because as I say in the title, of the presentation, the idea is a framework to make a fast diagnosis, fast. <laughs> Having in mind the complexity of what we are um, dealing with, uh, fast is, is, is rather ambitious. But we, have, we may have some tools that may help us to get closer to doing it fast. And uh, for example, the pathologies, uh, the pathologies uh, is something that has been taking uh, the analogy from medicine, when a doctor talks to another doctor and talks about a certain pathology, uh, he says, this patient is suffering from this pathology. The other doctor knows already, because he studied uh, when he did the studies of medicine, what is the cause, what is the prognostic, what is the treatment, etc. So just naming the pathology is enough to transmit the whole amount of information related to that particular pathology to other doctors. This is the, the purpose of these pathologies, in this case, organizational pathologies. By the way, uh, Stafford himself already started to use these pathologies in his publications. Uh, what I did here is to structure them in three main groups that have to see with the framework that I just explained. And are structural pathologies, functional pathologies, and pathologies related to information systems and communication channels. Let's see uh, very briefly. Uh, they are 26. We are not going to see them <laughs> in detail because we, we would spend uh, five hours. Uh, just very briefly, I will go through, through them to see uh, um, what they are. Uh, starting with the structural pathology. Well, these pathologies have to see with how well I make this vertical division of the organization. 
the environment is of environment, the organization is of organization, etc. How well I do that, and if I do it correctly and completely, as required by the amount of variety, complexity, that uh, I am facing, relevant variety eh, for my organization. Well, the first pathology is non-existence of vertical unfolding. Well, this means that the, the organization, a single organization, pretends to handle the whole variety of the whole environment. This may work if the organization is very small, it could be okay. But if the organization is, is not small, this is impossible because the amount of variety will, will be uh, um, excessive for a single organization. Uh, so this is a, a, a pathology uh, of not dividing. The second pathology uh, is uh, we have divided, we have created recursion levels, but we miss the, the first level. Uh, this is very curious because there are cases, for example, the universal justice. There, are, there is variety in the environment that nobody handles. Uh, for instance, the universal justice does not exist. We have a national or, or, or some groups of nations, but we don't have a universal justice for the whole planet that uh, everybody will be judged. No, there are some shade areas. Uh, well, this is a, a case. And the same would happen with international waters, with uh, contamination problems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, when we miss an organization that handles the whole, we have authority. The next is, is similar to this, uh, but uh, missing um, recursion levels in the middle. This is, uh, for example, very typical in the councils. The councils have a geographical delimitation. And uh, but, but there are problems that are not restricted to the geographical limits of a, of a municipality, of a council. Uh, for example, transport problems, um, uh, water treatment, waste treatments, uh, uh, treatment, or uh, fire protection, etc. So there are many aspects that, that are not restricted. A, a person that lives in the, in the council network to the one, uh, he wants that this, the communication problem between the two countries is solved. No? So this kind of structure is needed to handle this kind of environment. And what, when this does not exist, this variety mm, uh, corresponding to this uh, geographical area is handled either by the previous recursion level or by the next. In both cases, not very adequately, in case they do it. Hmm? Well, the final one has to see with this um, recursion criteria that are in conflict when we make the division. The functional pathologies um, are related to the viable system model, to all the systems. We have pathologies everywhere, in the system five, in the four, in the three, in the three star, in the system two, in the system one, in the whole organization. Of course, we are going to go through all of them. I will just present the images uh, that give us a, a, an idea of what they, uh, what they are about. You know? uh, in the center, we have an organization, by the way, with three recursion levels. We have the environment, the operations, and the management. We have the environment, the operations, and the management. We have the environment, the operations, and the environment. Uh, so we have three recursion levels at the same time. Well, typical pathologies of system five. First, ill-defined identity. I don't know who I am. <laughs> then you have a problem. <laughs> I don't know what is my purpose. Well, it seems that you have a problem. The other uh, pathology, institutional schizophrenia. Um, we have two souls. We are this. No, no, we are this other. We should do this. No, we should do this other. Uh, for example, a university, um, I want um, to design my university for um, getting a generalist university. No, no, I want a specialized university. Well, we rather clarify which one, because um, unless we clarify that, we cannot design anything. This is why I insist that we have to start by system five and then design whatever hangs from that. Well, the third uh, pathology is uh, when system five collapses into system three. This is very typical in the case of small companies that the, owner, the company grows and, and, and pretends to keep managing the here and now issues. Let's go, move on to the system four. Here we have a couple of pathologies um, very, very, very known. One is the headless chicken. Uh, we have a very small S4 
uh, or no S S4, system four. Uh, that means we are not, uh, we, don't, we don't have the organ that is exploring the outside and the future. Um, so the organization, when something uh, changes enough in the environment, will not be prepared and will disappear, will not adapt. Uh, the other is more typical, is when we have the system three and system four with a dissociation, they don't, they exist, but they don't communicate well among, among themselves. By the way, this um, homeostat system three, system four is the adaptation organ of the organization. When this organ doesn't work properly, the organization does not have capacity to adapt. So will disappear when something enough important happens in the environment. So this is a, a tremendous pathology, very frequent pathology, very frequent. Well, system three, uh, let's go briefly. <laughs> we have four um, pathologies. First one, inadequate management style. This is when system three uh, uses authority, command. Uh, well, this is a disaster. Uh, uh, and this is very frequent. Just giving commands to the managers of the operational units. This is something that uh, attenuates the variety. This is very, very, very bad, uh, like all pathology. The second one is schizophrenic system three. This is uh, refers to the two souls of system three. System three has one soul that is dedicated to talk to system four, to transmit the new things, to implement it in the system one. And the other soul is to run the day-to-day -day affairs. When these two souls are not talking uh, each other, we have a pathology. The third one is a hypertrophy. Well, this is uh, uh, it's okay, but it's too expensive. And the last one is a system three, uh, too weak. Then we have all the operational units, save yourselves. Eh? Uh, salve si quien pueda, in Spanish. Uh, system three star, uh, when we have a small system three star, uh, that is the audit channel, etc., etc., then we will have all, a proliferation of corruption and misbehavior everywhere. Uh, system two, here we have two funny uh, pathologies. One is a very small system two. Uh, no harmonizing uh, the interactions between the present and then is the chaos. Uh, save yourselves, each one for his walls, and no matter what happens with the rest and with the whole. No? Uh, well, this is one, but the other uh, is quite frequent. We were commenting it uh, early when we started the, the session <laughs> before you joined it. Is the system too, too big? Uh, the authoritarian system too. This is very, uh, very curious because um, it is when the arrow that goes from the operations toward the left to serve the environment to provide the services and the goods, the arrow is inverted and goes to the right. The energy is dedicated to fill papers, tramites was uh, naming John at the beginning, fill papers, reports, etc. So the energy is dedicated not to produce, no, no, it's dedicated to fulfill the requirements of a pathological system too. Well, this is very frequent, by the way, in universities and public administrations, at least in some countries. And finally, system one, we have three types of pathology. The first one is autopoietic beasts. This is when we have one operational unit that eats and eats and eats and eats in all the resources from the others, from the brothers, and grows and grows and grows until the brothers die, uh, until the organization die, die and, every, and at the end, everybody dies. It's like the cancer. And grows, grows, grows until the, the, the person dies and the cancer also. No? Uh, the, the second one is dominance of system one. Is when the system one is too powerful and the management system three, four, five are weak, then this organization will not adapt. Uh, and also is, is missing these crucial functions four and five. No? And the, the third one is a variation of this is when we have a system three, only the portion in that is connected to the here and now. Well, uh, just to end up the, the pathologies, the last group is the pathologies related to information systems and communication channels. Here we have our map uh, with, uh, with the three personal levels. Uh, the, the thing I have to mention is that the lines are not drawings, are communication channels. Each communication, each red, each colorful line has to have the eight components that I mentioned at the beginning. Sender, transducer, channel, transducer, receiver, transducer, channel, transducer, receiver. Eight components in each communication channel. This is one communication channel. These are communication channels. These are communication channels. These are communication channels. Connecting recursion levels. 
these are communication channels connecting, connecting recursion levels. This image is the image of the nervous system of the organization. It contains all the information systems with all the communication channels that our organization has to have. So the pathologies that are related to the nervous system, the information system, are the ones that are included in this group. Let's see briefly uh, the most uh, relevant ones. First of all, a lack of information systems. Well, this is obvious. If we miss information systems uh, crucial, uh, those functions can't operate. Uh, the, the second one is, is more frequent. That is fragmentation of information systems. We have many uh, information systems that we have been purchased in software uh, for customer um, relations, for production control, for uh, human resources control, for finance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they are not integrated, not related. They don't uh, constitute a an or organic system of information. They are aisles of information. This is very, very frequent because the organizations, when they grow, they start to purchase software. Mm -hmm. There are some, some integrated package, packages as SAP, etc. No? But uh, the many companies do not have such a sophisticated uh, kind of um, systems. The um, third factor is lack of communication channels. Well, uh, when uh, two functions do not have the communication channels that transmit the information needed, they cannot operate. The other one is lack of or insufficient algodonic channels. I separate the algodonic channels than the normal channels because they have a very specific mission. The algodonic channels are channels that go from the operations straight, if the problem is not solved before, straight up to the system five, where we have this red dot in the system five, um, asking the, for the intervention of system five because something very severe that is putting in danger the existence of the organization is happening. This is, this is why it's so critical. The organizations that don't have these channels, they will die and will be a surprise for them. Oh, we are dead. Will be a surprise eh, the day it comes because they have not signals, no? algodonic uh, signals. Uh, and the last one is communication channels, uh, which are either incomplete or um, they don't have, have, they have the eight components, but not with enough capacity to, um, to allow the amount of variety that has to go through all of them. Uh, this is uh, tremendous because we have hundreds of uh, channels or thousands of channels. And in each of them, we have to check that we have the eight components and, the, and, the, and each component has the capacity, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why they are frequent, no? very frequent also. Well, and this is what I wanted to say about the pathologies. Just uh, to end up uh, this uh, application of the framework and the, um, this uh, uh, path pathologies uh, taxonomy, uh, I will just provide two examples to see the power of the framework and the power of the pathologies. Uh, I will uh, show one example in a private company, and the other example is very funny because the European Union. <laughs> so we will see first the private company. This is a real case uh, of a company that asked, uh, asked me uh, to make a diagnosis. This is an international company, by the way, it's a German company that is located near Madrid. And uh, in this case, the system in focus is seven um, pro uh, product lines or operational units. Uh, here we have um, in the left, we have an image that will, will, will show that show us the normal size, let's call it like that, of the functions. Uh, so I will use that as a reference um, to compare it with the real size, that is the size in the middle, that is the outcome of the diagnosis. Um, by the way, the diagnosis is made uh, using a set of questions, in fact, more than 250 questions that are grouped for each of the functions for system one, system three, system four, etc. And the outcome of that, once the study uh, is uh, finalized, is the image that we have in the center, where we can see that the farther we are for, from the normal size, the, the more sick we are. For example, here we see that this 
uh, this company is very funny, by the way, very strange. It has a very small system three. This is really is rare right? <laughs> that they have a, they don't have a powerful system three. It's, it's not almost non-existent. Uh, system two also very small. The system four is small. System five more or less. Well, in the right we have a a, 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 a a graph or a matrix where we can see for the system in focus a quantification of the sickness uh, in a scale that goes from one to 10. One is a disaster and 10 is perfect. And we, uh, as I say, as an outcome of this questionnaire answering and diagnosis, et cetera, with the company, uh, I ended up with this number. It's an it's a approximation, obviously, no? uh, and a qualitative appreciation. For example, system five is a six, uh, system three is a two, very bad, uh, system three stars, system two, system one is, uh, well, six, more or less, okay, well, uh, at least has to uh, exist a system one, because if a company doesn't, does not have a system one, there is no company. <laughs> so uh, all of them have a, a, a five at least. No? Uh, but the funny thing in this case is that the algedonic channel, they had not algedonic channels. So this company was going to disappear and was going to be a surprise for them uh, the day the, the, the death would come. Well, we can get an average for these uh, figures and trying to get a kind of indicator of the, the aggregated health for the company. In this case, it's a 3.7. So this was the level of health of this company. Well, the other example is a diagnosis of the European Union uh, here we have the recursion levels, Europe, uh, the, the different uh, uh, states, the regions, etc. I, I, I'm not going to it, of course. No. I just show it as an example of the application of the framework. This, uh, this was a research that did in the 2012, Henry Lepscher. This is a, um, did it for an um, Austrian university as a thesis, a master thesis. And he made the diagnosis. I put the example because he followed the, followed strictly the framework that I just described. And he used the pathologies that I just described. So in the thesis, um, through the, all, the, all the pages of the thesis, is the application of this framework. So it's a good example of the power of the framework and the relatively easiness of application, uh, as is the case. Um, as you can see, we have two images. In the left, we have the image of the European Union at the recursion level zero. Uh, by the way, the study was done in the 2012, but with data from 2007. It was before the financial crisis, before, of course, the virus problem, the war, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. So it was before all these tremendous uh, um, events. Huh? Uh, so we can see in the left, the normal sizes, and in the right, we have the sizes that this research diagnosed for the European Union. The system five, <laughs> system four, system three, system two, system three star, and here we have our own operational units. I would not call it a topic list, it's too strong <laughs> to name it like that. Uh, well, this was just the, the example uh, of application that I, uh, I wanted to share with you. Uh, and just to end up my presentation, a very fast review uh, of the software and a final example that I consider that is important that I share. Well, the software I will go very fast because uh, you have the tutorial for anyone that wants to see it, how it operates, uh, can go to this address. And there is a video uh, where I explain how it works. Uh, but I will just go um, very fast through the main functions. The example used in the, in the, in the example is the, the case that I will show at the end, that is a real case applied to a, in a public university in the northwest of Spain. I will explain it at the end. This is the, 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 the example I, I took for, the, for, the, for showing you the software. Well, the software allows to create the study, create the structure, navigate through it, create the, the viable system model map, introduce information, etc. How uh, we create the structure? First of all, we have to create the vertical division, recursion criteria, and operational units. And automatically, when we create that, automatically the map is created. Uh, we select the recursion criteria, we select the systems that we want to add uh, in this pipe. Uh, in this example, we have um, three universities in the, the whole region. We click on any of it and we go to next recursion level. And then we add 
if we keep the recursion criteria, in this case, yes, we have the campus. Here we, we see three campus. We select one campus and we go to next recursion level where we have the faculties. Automatically, all the BSM maps have been created when we did that. We can navigate through it. With, we have several maps. The more interesting map is the global one where we see all, all these uh, recursion criteria and, um, and recursion levels and uh, operational units. Uh, 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 in all the possibilities, just mention that when we click in any position, automatically we shift the system in focus to the point that we selected in this multiverse. If we want to use the, the term, uh, well, we have more maps. I will not get into them. Uh, it's, 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 you just go to the to the um, to the tutorial and see it if you are interested. Let's see the BSM chart here. Uh, to see the chart, we just uh, click on the details. And we will see the BSM of the system in focus that has been created when we create the structure, it's automatically created. We it can have it in three dimensions. I, I, I use the three dimension because it's very funny for communicating it. Uh, and also it's very good because it's a good metaphor for a spacecraft. <laughs> Our organization is a spacecraft that travels in the universe, in the black universe. No? <laughs> it's a good way of communicating so we can play with it. No? We, we can, do any kind of all kinds of things. Here, for instance, we see uh, the system in focus of the main campus of the university with nine faculties. We see here the nine operational units that are nine faculties. Uh, well, introduction of information. We can introduce information everywhere in all the components. Uh, how we introduce information? We just select where we want to introduce it, click on it, and we get information capturing screens. We go to our hard disk and introduce, upload whatever we select. And when we select the information, uh, a clip indicates that we added something. If we double click on the clip, the information will be visible. Uh, we can introduce tests, um, PowerPoints, uh, Excel, videos, audios, simulation models, etc. any kind of information. Well, uh, the introduction uh, for the other uh, functions is the same, so I will not get into that. Uh, maybe one small observation about the communication channels. Uh, for the homeostats, we provide two options. One is introduce information in an open way or using the chart for that, that uh, Stafford uh, named. Uh, that is adding the transducer, the channels, transducers. Uh, we can add as many in the two directions and introduce information in each of the components. You see the clips there means that some information has been introduced. Uh, well, just uh, to end up this uh, review of the of the software uh, to mention that we can introduce information in the relations between the environments and in the relations between the operational units. We do that using a matrix, for example, for the environments, since we may have many combinations, for instance, an organization with 19 operational units, the number of combinations, or nine, the number of combinations, and we do that with a matrix. We have all the possible combinations and we just select the cell where we want to introduce something and we double click and open and introduce whatever we want. And the same with the relation with the operational units. And the last feature in relevant is the redrawing of the system ones. This is very important for communicating purposes. For example, we have here the nine faculties. We want to select parameters to talk about uh, how the different faculties compare uh, each other. For example, the number of students, number of professors, number of papers published, uh, the budget, the um, square meters, whatever. No? We just select the parameter, adding in the parameters that are pertinent. We provide the numbers to them and we select the, the parameter and automatically we can visualize the system in focus with the sizes proportional to the parameter that we did selected. We see, for instance, we have a faculty here and we can make zoom in eh? and see that economics has 3,000 students, architecture 2,000, sociology 300, etc. We can do that with all the parameters, with the students, with the budget, with the papers published, with the number of professors and put the images together so for communicating purposes, I think that is a very powerful tool uh, to transmit information. Well, and finally, and with that I end up with the software, we can combine it with system dynamics models, for example. Uh, by the way, I recommend to anyone interested in going to the paper where we explain why we consider that it's convenient to combine it and how to do it. 
Uh, the way to do it is just as easy as uh, clicking there, as, as I explained, go to the system for, for instance, go to the system dynamics model that I previously have created with the software pertinent, in this case was uh, created with, I think, uh, select the model, upload it. Uh, we can play with the model, uh, use it, uh, modify it, save it, close it, and we'll be closed and save it inside our viable system model. will be a part of our organism. It's embedded in system five. Well, that was all for the software. And just to end up uh, with the ocean, John, and the glass, the, the last portion of water from the ocean, and I will end up is the, the final example that I think that is very important to share with, uh, with uh, many of you that don't know it. This is an intervention that lasted eight years. And I mentioned it because it was, it was very important and very lucky because it was an intervention in the University of A Coruña in the Northwest of Spain, uh, because the vice president of the university during eight years uh, is an architect urban planner and had the power and the money. And he was uh, very interested in organizational cybernetics. This is a miracle. Uh, it's a really a miracle. Uh, eight years. And during these eight years, what has been done with organizational cybernetics? I will go, very, by the way, uh, the intervention is documented in several books. Here you have two, two um, uh, screen caps of the books where uh, is documented this, this, this work uh, with much detail. Here I will just give you some, some very short reference. Here we have Galicia in the northwest of Spain. Here we have the three universities of Galicia. We are interested in A Coruña. The A Coruña is a university with 24,000 students, 1,500 teachers, 25 buildings, 60 degrees. Today is even more because this was at the time of the study and is located in two main cities, Coruña for all. So uh, how was the uh, approach used? The same way I explained it. First step, um, identity, purpose, and um, vertical division. Um, what is the environment where the organization uh, has the activity and, and the relevance? The geographical environment is that, the 60 kilometers diameter that covers a region with 650,000 people. And here are the two cities where the university has campuses. Well, this was the area where this university has influence um, in the narrow sense, because it, it has influence more. Well, here we see the main campus in A Coruña. Here we see where it's located. Second step, um, the creation of the vertical structure, five recursion levels. And for each recursion level, purpose, specific environment, key factors, etc., and using the matrix that I mentioned before. The, the five levels are the whole Galicia, the urban region, 60 kilometers, the cities, the campus, and the buildings. Here, we can see, for example, the purpose, how the purpose has been instantiated at each recursion level. Here we have recursion level zero, the whole Galicia, the specific purpose at that level. Uh, in the recursion level one, urban region, what is the, the purpose in, in the, the relevant issues at this level, etc. Yeah? So this, in one map, you have the whole area of intervention of the vice president, and also you have a map to communicate to other colleagues. Well, uh, the last column are the actions that have been designed. They are numbered with the colors of rank nine, or rank 16, et cetera. Uh, we are going to see just two or three of them. Uh, 30, 38 actions were uh, developed, 21 related to urban planning, and 17 related to architecture. We, we are going to show just two or three. Eh? Uh, for example, a recursion level zero, one action, just to give you the idea of the scale, uh, the first action is Urban 9, that is creating a scientific and technological park. Here you, you see the images of the drawings when that was designed. All the names are different uh, research buildings or scientific buildings. Uh, these are the, the projects, the project, the building that was built, the real building, another, more buildings, 
More buildings? More buildings? More components for this? We are talking about one action of the 28. So this was one action. Let's go to the urban 16, another action. That is, this is the creation of a university residential area of 622 beds. This, this was located here, you see in the yellow. We see the main campus down here and we see the city in the north of the image is the city, downtown. Uh, well, this was a residence uh, that the university had no uh, places for the students. And there was a huge project of 30 million euros budget. Uh, here you see the drawings. Next recursion level, the urban region. Here I will talk first about urban action one. That is, this affects the territory, this 60 kilometers uh, diameter. These uh, numbers that you see are the stops of a railway, very old, narrow and slow, but connects the two cities where the university has campus. And what is the uh, use of that? When this rail is activated uh, with the time uh, schedules uh, that are um, compatible with the lectures in the university, the students may live in these villages where uh, the train stops. It's slow, but this, we are talking about 60 kilometers. So the distance is 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 10 kilometers. Even if it's slow, it doesn't matter because we are talking about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That is much, much, much faster than by car because the, the, the communication by car in these roads is, is slow. Uh, and also, uh, there is an additional problem that you have to have space for parking in the university uh, or living in the cities, which is very expensive. So this had a very important social impact because more students could go to the university because they could afford to keep living at home because they could go by train. Well, this was the, uh, and the final example at this recursion level, and I'm almost uh, approaching the end, is uh, Urban Action 11. This was a huge structure of 350 meters long. I'm going to show you the project. The idea of this structure, this mega structure, let's call it, this is in, inside the railway and the main road of access to the city. So it will be the facade of the university to anybody that enters the city of Acoruña. would see this uh, huge building that is the university. Well, this was the project with many functionalities that uh, we are not going to get into it, just to show you images of the intermodal station, the train stops and connects with bus, et cetera, et cetera, and many other uh, services, just to show you the dimension of the action. Here you see more drawings for this campus center. And finally, we go to the recursion level four and I will be ending. Here I will mention two uh, options. One is the uh, two actions. One is the urban eight, the redesign of a square in the main campus, yeah? uh, that triangle that we saw before. Here we have in the left, the, what was the main square before the intervention? Was dedicated to cars, to park the cars there. That was the use. And this is the result after the intervention on the right. Grass and the banks to sit and the possibility of the students talk among them and the professors to exchange because the buildings that are around this square are faculties of different disciplines. So this provides the opportunity from the point of view of variety and systemic relations that the different disciplines talk there taking the sun yeah? or even give some lectures. Before we have cars, eh? now we have this. So this was, a, I think, a drastic change. And the last one uh, is a very symbolic uh, intervention. I put it at the end because I think that is very interesting because it's not physical, eh? it's symbolic. Here we, we see the other campus that the university has downtown. Uh, in fact, it's so downtown that this green uh, uh, component inside this uh, yellow circle uh, with a uh, red uh, arrow uh, is the, the green uh, field, is the field of Deportivo La Coruña, <laughs> the football field. Close to it, uh, the university has three buildings uh, that belong to the university. What was the action? 
Here we have the three buildings uh, that belong to the university. Uh, we see the triangle, uh, the yellow triangle where the intervention took place. We see a straight line more clear in the grass. Uh, this, is, this is after the intervention, but before the intervention, what we had here was a wall that was hid, hiding the building that was behind the wall. That is a beautiful example of architecture from the you know, architecture from the 30s of the last century. So the action was uh, here. You see the wall, eh? uh, horrible wall. Eh? Uh, here you see the fences the, of the wall. The action was to uh, take a machine and remove the wall. Uh, you see the, the 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 picture of at that time here. You see the machine and the grass that was planted. So. The, this area that was restricted for the inside of the university, used by the way only for parking half a dozen people. Now this area that is downtown the city, given back to the citizens of Coruña, so they can enjoy the grass and enjoy the beauty of the buildings, and also to see that there is the university is there because the university was not visible. The, the only thing visible was a wall yeah? because the university is five kilometers away. But now they see the university that is downtown near the football. So when they come out of the play of the Deportivo La Coruña uh, for the championship, eh? <laughs> they go here to uh, have a look and walk through this grass. Uh, this line that you see, this straight line clear, is, is, is designed purposefully with the following intention. You see the line here, the red line, that is aligned in such a way that when you go through this line, you will see this. That is the symbol of the city and the symbol of the university. It's the same symbol. So when you walk through this straight line, you see your city and your university, and you are conscious that your city has a university and also has a, um, a, a this monument, by the way, uh, this monument is the uh, oldest lighthouse that is operative uh, in the world. It's from the third century, built by the Romans. And it uh, was refurbished in the 16th century. The, the outside was, was uh, covered in the 17th century. And uh, it's a, a humanity heritage. So it's a very important monument. And this is uh, everything I wanted to share with you. Uh, so, John, I'm sorry for taking 10 minutes more than. <laughs> <laughs> than allow it for the glass. <laughs> uh, well, here you have the book for anybody that is interesting. Here we have, you have the references uh, for the methodology and also for the pathologies and the software, et cetera, et cetera. And here also I have this, this slide where you can see some uh, in journals, uh, scientific journals dedicated to the uh, organizational cybernetics. There are some works like the big plans that were developed by Raúl Espejo, uh, or the special issue of International Journal of Systemic Studies, or the one from System Practice or Kubernetes, etc. Where anybody interested can go to these um, special issues and get more information. So thanks very much, and that was all. Okay, wonderful. Can you? Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I must say, I'm feeling quite exhausted, Jose. I felt like we did a month's VSM class in an hour. Yeah, well, it was the, the ocean. I, I, I told you at the beginning. Yeah, well, you did you it. tried to I'm put very... the ocean inside the glass. I'm, I'm very impressed. OK, we can start some questions. I think, Peter, did you have your hand up? No, I was applauding, but I did think that was absolutely wonderful to see, and particularly to see the practical application over time. That was absolutely uh, fantastic. I mean, I think it is a a brilliant um, explanation of the whole dimension from start to finish and well not finish I hope it's ongoing but the interweaving of, um, of, all, of what you've done there is exceptional and um, congratulations thank you. thank you so much thank you thanks very much Peter okay Javier uh, hello Jose congratulations bueno, Javier, tu has estado en Valladolid Y ha sido testigo de bastantes elementos. ¿eh? Claro que sí. Hemos I, I've been there. <coughs> ah, sorry. I was speaking Spanish to Javier. Uh, sorry, I, I, I changed my brain unconsciously. <laughs> Go on, Javier. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, what I what I wanted to know is in some of these uh, diagnoses that you run, how much time uh, do you spend in in doing the questions to the people interviews in order to get the mapping of the of the model that they're living uh, to compare to the theoretical model? How much time do you spend doing the questioning? Yeah. And do you have those questions? Uh, is it, do you have like a questionnaire or, or, or do you improvise for every case or what's going on there? Yeah, you are talking about the application in the case of the company. Yes. Yeah, in this case, uh, well, we use uh, the, um, several days uh, in order to get a first diagnosis. This first diagnosis was um, obtained not going through the 250 plus questions, because then we would spend many days. And that was done through several days and was interviews, uh, specific interviews guided by the questions, but um, general. But even was not much time, uh, it was very powerful because of the power of the methodology. Uh, as we can see, because it was very easy to see that they have no algodonic channels, that they don't have system three, <laughs> because they, they, it was immediate. It's, uh, I don't need uh, 100 questions. It's just, you don't have system three. Who runs the, 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 the um, seven uh, production units? Nobody. Is the responsible of the operational unit number three is the one that handles the whole. Oh my God. So he is the one that decides when the resources are scarce, uh, how uh, are going to be used. I am afraid that probably he will use the resources for himself. <laughs> that may happen, or this customer that requires some, etc. So they have no system three, and they have no system two. So it was anarchy. The, the production was planned uh, responding uh, to the moment. Oh, we have a customer asking, uh, where is the, 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 this uh, order that is not supplied? Oh, this order is the, the, the operational unit number seven. Uh, you, how are you? Uh, there was no system two. You couldn't have people. Uh, uh, please provide me some persons of your unit uh, to help me. Uh, the product was uh, and like that all. So it was relatively fast <laughs> um, due to the bad uh, situation. <laughs> Probably if the organization is well developed, you need more time <laughs> to um, fine tune more. No? Uh, okay. In the case of the university, it was eight years. Uh, they were conversations of hundreds of hours with the vice president, hundreds of hours, because uh, we are good friends uh, from many years. So it was a very long, and uh, the number of hours that he dedicated was huge with all the teams you can imagine all the number of interventions. Was but you can see the results. They're amazing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, one of the results, I put it at the end, and the, I think that is interesting to share it. <laughs> uh, not everything is, is nice. Uh, only the, in the stories end well, some of them, but not all of them end well. Uh, the final example, where I show the machine uh, uh, removing the wall, this was done without asking permission to the president, because he <laughs> knew that he was not going to get it. So he did, okay, if I ask for it, I will not do it. So I first do it, and then I... Uh, <laughs> Como Pancho Villa, Fusila de Ceder Veriguas. Well, in fact, he was uh, thrown away, not because of that, because of, of he was too powerful, too active, and that was too much. So this was one of the reasons. Uh, so uh, the things uh, delicate. This is, this is why the other dimensions, uh, we have no time to, 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 to talk about it, is the political dimension of the interventions. Of course, they have a tremendous importance. Uh, in this case, since were more technical interventions, buildings, projects, and there was uh, uh, until the wall, <laughs> because behind the wall, there were some people that was parking the cars there. Now they don't have place to park the car because it's grass. <laughs> so they were not happy. So they, they were real good enemies eh? uh, of this intervention. <laughs> <laughs>
is, mm. is, is an example. Anyway, <laughs> this was the the, the okay. Thank the, you. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Javier. Okay, another question. Um, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, go go ahead, Brian. So I've made a, made some notes here. Um, and the question is, um, we, if we are in a big crisis, and you know the one I'm concerned about, it's climate change. We have only eight and two thirds years to halve emissions before crossing a threshold where the situation becomes irreversible. That's the situation that the climate scientists say we're in. That's climate change. And Jose mentioned that as one of his crises. Yeah. And the other crises, crisis I'd like to keep in mind is World War II, because what I'm going to ask as a kind of devil's advocate, because I'm a big fan of the VSM, I'm holding up the Zahir lecture that I wrote to Stafford Beer in 1974, you know, having heard his massy lectures, and he sent me this, and up the back, written in Pali, I think, is something from the Bhagavad Gita or whatnot, together with his own translation, right? So I've been a fan since 1974, and I'm very concerned about climate change. So I'm now going to pose a question as a kind of devil's advocate, right? So I'm conflicted. Yeah. I'm a fan of the VSM. I yeah. think if we need an organisation to deal with climate change, then the VSM is it, right? So that's that's one hand of it. But my question is, is it necessary but not sufficient? Um, in both in both climate change and going back to World War II, is it the icing on the cake, but not the cake itself, right? Uh, it's a good organization, you know, great the best possibly, but not the cake. And I'll say what the cake is. Mm -hmm. I think the cake is also big ideas. If you go back to World War II, where would you be if you didn't have Bletchley Park with Turing, who discovered how to crack the code, right? You could have a wonderful BSM, you know, set up by Churchill, say, in World War II. But if you didn't have Bletchley Park, which was one of the key things that led the Allies to beat the Nazis, you wouldn't be winning, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying either or, but I'm saying of the two, which is the most important? Is it the organizational model or is it the big ideas, right? Now come to climate change. Um, I'm asking the same question. Um, recently, it's been announced that we might get fusion by, 1925, uh, by 2025. Uh, they've got a working model going at MIT. That's a great idea. Fusion, not fission, right? We, uh, what I've just described is there's a green grid linking all countries. They've got a little bit in the EU, interconnectors, but because the sun goes round the planet, somewhere there'll be wind and solar 24 hours. And that's a great idea, right? But it came about without a VSM, right? It didn't take the VSM to get that idea. Likewise, it didn't take the VSM to get the fusion, which they're pushing for. It didn't take the VSM to get Mark Carney with his 130 trillion at COP26, right? Yeah. So how do, what, are we, what, what is my question? My question is, if you had to choose between having a wonderful organization like the VSM or having the wonderful projects or ideas like I've just listed in both cases, RJ Mitchell with the Spitfire in World War II and Bletchley Park with Alan Turing, right? Which of the two would you go for? <laughs> yes, thanks very much uh, for your question. <laughs> uh, um, because you present in, in a question that is, is, is very, very pertinent, first of all. Uh, but I have to um, say the following. First, uh, um, 
in my last presentation, in the last example, you may see that I did not use the BSM. I use the recursion levels key issues matrix. We could add a recursion level minus one that would be the whole planet. And then put in this matrix using the same approach, the first stage and the second stage of the framework that I presented, because the BSM appears in the third and the fourth, uh, partially in the fourth. Uh, but in the first, uh, is just identity. What are we here for? We are here in a planet. We are human beings. If the temperature rises five degrees uh, of the ocean, we are not going to have oxygen because 50% of the oxygen comes from, from phytoplankton and the phytoplankton will die if the temperature rises five degrees. So the earth, 50% of the oxygen disappear. So the human being cannot breathe, will not be able to breathe. This is a serious problem. And, but we can identify that as a, a the recursion level minus one telling, okay, the purpose of the humanity is to, 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 to keep alive, <laughs> I suppose. And then we go to the environment, and the environment includes the climate, includes et cetera, et cetera. So all these issues will be handled, not with the, the, the BSM, will be handled be, before we get into the organizations that we have to set up to implement whatever ideas we think eh, or purposes that we think we should reach. For example, in relation to the uh, climate, we may decide we want to change the uh, use of fossil uh, energies. Like in Spain, we are uh, committed, I hope, uh, to moving away uh, as far as possible uh, from fossil energies and go to solar. We have a lot of sun first a lot of sun in Spain, <laughs> you, you, all, all of you know, especially the English, the British people, uh, when they come to Spain from London and similar. <laughs> and we have a lot of air and we have a lot of land. So it, 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 it seems that we should create organizations, the government, uh, all the governments uh, should do it, no, no matter the, the, the political party that is on power, no? should have uh, in mind this, this purpose uh, for example, related to energy, uh, has many implications uh, related to climate change, of course, because we are a way of, uh, of, of fuel or a way of gas, uh, and we move to solar energy and air, uh, 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 and also biomass uh, that will help us to protect the, the, the forests that are burning in Spain. Every summer, you will see from the space, the satellites see the smoke, coming out of Spain and Portugal because it's on fire. This is tremendous. And this, is, uh, this, this framework uh, can be applied perfectly for that. Um, the, bio, the bio system model, you say, okay, and then what is the use of the bio system model? It would be useful uh, for uh, helping to design the organizations that will, will try to uh, get that the, that, that the situation evolves toward those goals or purposes, you have to organize that. Who is going to do it? And, and uh, what is the time schedule? Uh, what are the, 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 the elements, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All the, all the um, in operative aspects. Then is when it may be useful. Uh, well, this is one side. Uh, another uh, aspect to answer your question, Forgetting the, the VSM and forgetting the recursion levels, uh, key factors, matrix, etc. There is another aspect. And I mentioned in the first slide, systems thinking and organizational cybernetics. Organizational cybernetics is, in the, is not the whole universe. It's one of them. There are lots of uh, systemic approaches uh, that are uh, focusing on different kinds of complexity. For example, uh, system dynamics, is not, uh, is not organizational cybernetics. System dynamics uh, is a methodology to help you to put in the conceptual map the variables that you consider pertinent for the issue that you are interested in handling. Dynamical relations to evaluate the impact of different decisions, different alternatives, for example, the energy, how long it will take Spain to move to solar energy to cover 30% of the demand or whatever. You need to know what is the capacity of production 
or of purchasing of solar plugs, photovoltaic plugs, et cetera, et cetera. So you could build system dynamics models that help you to cope with this, com this dynamic complexity. It's another methodology. So uh, I, I, if, if my message uh, was understood like that, I did it wrong. I don't uh, say that the organizational cybernetics and the biosystem model is the only tool at all. Right? I say that is one of them and very powerful because this matrix, uh, I consider it extremely useful. Uh, for instance, for helping the public authorities uh, in the case of the, the coronavirus. Uh, we have um, the real case in Spain, well, everywhere. No? Uh, and I had the opportunity of talking with uh, the responsible of the critical uh, uh, units, uh, where the, the, the people that is about to die was there, uh, responsible for the whole region, and is a doctor. And I, we talked using these terms of recursion levels, because we have the, 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 the health ministry of Spain, the central government, we have the uh, autonomies, uh, like the landers in Germany or the states in, in the United States, etc., uh, with a different government. And we have the municipalities, the counties with the, the, with the mayor and the, and the team. Uh, and we have the, on the other side, we have all the subdivisions of the health doctors, uh, hospitals, etc. All this complexity. How can they handle this complexity? Uh, what happened? They, they did not handle it. So they were, uh, they were doing, uh, uh, responding to the moment. Eh? Uh, but there was not a structure, systemic structure, to make sense of the, the um, policies that were designed in the central government with the policies that were designed at the um, autonomies, with the policies designed in the local um, uh, health centers uh, in the city. Uh, th th there, there were not communication channels. There was one of the pathologies I mentioned before. Did not exist, uh, etc. So uh, the applications of the systemic approach, then I, I move up uh, to the systemic approach, not only organizational cybernetics. Systemic approach uh, is, I would say that is absolutely needed. Uh, these other uh, cases that you were mentioning, uh, they, they, they all uh, need not a viable system model, but they need a systemic approach uh, to take them into account. And this is why we uh, propose to use a systemic cybernetic approach. In particular, this, this was the, the name of the WASC Congress this year. Here we have the president and the managing director, Raúl Espejo, that is in my screen, is on the right uh, corner. Eh? <laughs> and, and Igor, you are on the left center. Eh? The, you have the president and the uh, managing director and the conference, uh, by the way, that was uh, uh, done in Moscow uh, this year, uh, uh, online, most of it. No? Uh, they propose a systemic cybernetic approach, holding many approaches within the, with the systemic thinking field. I don't know if I answer <laughs> your, your question. Thanks. Thanks to you eh, for the question. Eh? Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? We got, we got a few minutes left. We're yeah, I got a question. Time. Okay, go ahead. Hi, uh, Jose, um, to keep it short, um, I have not heard that you nominate essential variables. And yeah. um, if you haven't, why not? And uh, what can you say about the use of essential variables when doing it, the diagnosis of an organization? If you don't have them, you say? No, they are there, but I did not hear that you nominate essential variables. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I put them uh, because if you see, I did not dwell into the the viable system model detail. Uh, I concentrated in the, the general framework. The, the essential variables were somehow um, um, mentioned uh, in the recursion level critical, critical essential uh, variables matrix. We yeah. could put the, the, the name there. And they should be in the matrix where you say the purposes and the essential or critical or strategic uh, variables that you have to put at each recursion level. They are there. Okay. They are there. Okay. Then I'll, when you I'll move... have a look. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, Camilo, you okay, have so a you are very nice to see you. Eh? I'm very happy <laughs> of seeing okay. you again, even if it's <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. Dream, eh? it's a, well, in fact, I'm very happy to see all of you, Alena, everybody. That is uh, just colleagues and friends. Well, it's fantastic. Eh? So okay, we Angela, have a, enjoy. Okay. Thank you very much for organizing this. It's fantastic. Another, wait, wait, wait. Come, Jose, we have another question. Come, Camilo, tell me, tell me. Okay. Hello. Oh. Can you confirm you're hearing me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. First of all, thanks a lot for the opportunity to join this conversation. It's very interesting to share this space with the authors I've been reading. Well, this might be the most trivial question and apologies for that. Uh, I've recursions are labeled from zero to positive infinity. And all the examples I have, uh, have read so far start uh, recursion at zero level at the atomic, the smaller level and recurs to positive infinity to the universal level. I couldn't help but noticing that your recursions uh, start at the, at the general level yes. uh, with the collection of buildings. Yeah. So my, my, uh, in my ingenuity, I assume that you're, you're going to start uh, growing and recursing to the smaller level. And I would like to, understand your logic from that does that mean that it won't grow anymore yeah okay uh, 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 you ask why i invert the, the sequence <laughs> instead Correct. of going from the very small to the uh, huge i do the contrary yes uh, and i do it very intentionally uh, and the reason is is the following when you are going to design an organization a university just to take an example that is easy to understand. You cannot start designing the rooms, uh, the, 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 the degrees, the matters of the different degrees. Uh, it makes no sense. You have to start, first of all, telling what kind of university I wish. Presential, online, a mix, a generalistic, a specific, mix and mix, dedicated to technology, dedicated to social sciences, dedicated to whatever. And unless you answer that question, you cannot design anything. If, if you decide, well, I have good examples. In, in my faculty, uh, we have uh, three, uh, four levels. One is dedicated to parking cars <laughs> that are sleeping there. So 25% of the space is dedicated to cars. <laughs> This is funny. Eh? And then we have the other three dedicated to professors, to rooms, uh, uh, re research, etc. This is because the architect that designed it didn't have in mind if we were going to have online teaching, because if you have online teaching, you don't have students there. Eh? You don't need parking. A few, a few uh, places for the professors, uh, maybe. Uh, so the kind of building they are, that the architect is going to design is drastically different in function of how you answer the question, what kind of university we want. No, no, this, we, 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 you just build the building, we have the money, and just build uh, big uh, for many students. What kind of building? Uh, you cannot design it, well, you can design it and do it wrong. Eh? Uh, so uh, this way, the, the more difficult question is the first, that is, first of all, top down, uh, decide, what is your organization? What is your aim? What is the recursion level that is pertinent? Uh, as was in the question before, if we are talking about climate change, the recursion level is not my country. Doesn't make sense. Eh? Uh, the recursion level must be the whole planet, eh? I suppose. And then we will see the kind of organization that is needed at that level to have the authority to take decisions in this environment. And then we will unfold and we'll go down to uh, a narrower environment with narrower organizations or groups of nations. And we go down and down and down until we reach my building. And in my building, I will put a photovoltaic plug, uh, uh, plugs in the roof. But everything has to be consistent with the starting. Not, well, I start putting plugs. No, 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 uh, the whole planet. That's the issue. 
and then we have to create the organization. And if we, if we don't have it, it's a pathology. In fact, it was the first of the pathologies that I mentioned, uh, the second pathology. That, that is the first recursion level missing. This is the case for the climate change. We don't have recursion level zero organization. Nobody cares about that. Yeah, we have countries, groups of countries, uh, 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 groups, activity groups, um, researchers, uh, but they are um, in recursion levels down, but not a uh, global organization that has that effect. Well, we have that uh, uh, approximation of Paris uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, with the, uh, um, the uh, uh, ODS, Etc. This is a kind of approximation, but this is just very, very incomplete. So this, this would be, I don't know if I answer Camilo, your question. Okay, thank you. Um, we got, uh, Peter, would this be the last question? I think we were out of time, but, but go ahead. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I have two questions that are interrelated. Um, the VSM is, to my understanding, really based upon the nervous system. Uh, that, that, that Stafford looked at a human uh, as a viable system within the context of his work in accountability organizations. So there's someone in charge, if you like, or there's someone that's responsible, like in your example of the university, you had a relationship with, the, with, the lead, with a, a significant person who can make decisions to hire and fire yeah. people and to say what goes and what doesn't go. Um, in, the, in the context of information systems and communication systems, we know a lot more about emotional systems now with the vagus and earth and the work of Candice Pert and the work on, on information flows in water through the fascia system or the fascia layer of the body. Uh, I'm interested in one, um, do you know of anybody who's interested in expanding the VSM to include yes. new information and communication channels based on new science? And that's, that's the first question. The other question, which is sort of related, is in, re in relation to climate change and others, as you said, there's no organization. So that's missing in a sense. And how do we work with uh, where there isn't a, a, an accountability hierarchy, if you will, with someone that can make executive decisions about the climate. There's not going to be like the leader of the world that says, you know, you guys have got to stop doing this and you've got to do that or you're fired kind of thing, like <laughs> the guy with the wall, right? So, I mean, the guy with the wall knew the wall needed to come down, but he got fired. So um, anyway, there's the two related questions. Is who do you know and who's working on other yeah. kind of expanses of VSM and how do we deal with the sort of decision-making when there's no accountability? Yeah. And you've got, yeah. you've got three minutes, Jose. <laughs> no, it's not the ocean. It's the ocean in part of the galaxy. <laughs> Just to put it in the glass. Yeah. No, <laughs> let's try it. In, in relation to the... To the um, um, the nervous system and the, the not consideration of the emotional aspects. Uh, this is not um, completely right. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, um, the, 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 the lack of authority uh, when we talk about the climate global change, lack of authority that dictates whatever. Uh, one thing, in the organizational cybernetics, um, you have to um, define the identity and the purpose. And this has to be shared all recursion levels down. So when you succeed doing this, you have 7,500 million people conscious. You don't need an authority telling, I give you the command that you put photovoltaic plugs in the roof. No, it's not necessary. If you succeed designing the organization and getting that the identity and the purposes are embedded, transmitted and embedded in all the levels down to the individual, to the person. So then that would, would, would not be needed because it would be natural demanded. What you would have there would be some kind of organizing, coordination or something like that. But this is somehow. Um, and the other aspect in relation to the, if there, are, there is a, somebody trying to expand the, the VSM, Yes, there are many people working um, within the, the systems thinking community. Uh, uh, people working on um, second order cybernetics, uh, for example, Raul Espejo with some colleagues, uh, 
and, and, and further that, they call it third order. Okay, there are a lot of debate about that, uh, if that uh, exists or not. But in, uh, anyhow, just to go further up, a way of the viable system model uh, and just more conceptual to take into account uh, the interrelation between organizations, between uh, human beings, and between non-human non entities that have, have to be taken into account. There are groups making this kind of research. And also there, there, there is another group, uh, well, if Angela is uh, there, uh, Steve that uh, was somewhere in the screen before uh, is there, myself and uh, Martin Fibre. There, there, there are some people uh, working on expanding a little bit that, uh, and many others. Uh, there, are, there are many directions. Uh, uh, so the biosystem model is, is good for whatever it is. In fact, just to end up my, my, my uh, reference to it, and I forgot to mention it. When I explain the viable system model to managers or to students, I put the example of the uh, cataratas. Uh, I don't know if they are called like that. Yeah. They are. Uh, uh, yeah. When you get a pack, they crystalline. I don't know how this yeah. Cataract. Uh, mm -hmm. Cataracts. You say oh, yeah. that the viable system of the seven is like removing the cataracts and put it a clear crystalline, so you start to see things that you were not seen before. It's not the solving of the all the universe problem, but you start to see better. Eh? Uh, yeah. And also, the other the other reference is the Google Maps yes. of the organizations. Yeah, yeah. You come from the whole universe. You see the planet. You yeah, see yeah. Europe. You see Spain. You see Castilla. You see Valladolid. You see my university. You see my faculty. You see yeah. my department. We see, you see my building, so, and we always are coherent when mm -hmm. we make this uh, approximation like mm -hmm. Google Maps, eh? mm -hmm. and we just uh, zoom out where we wish. Show me the moon, show me Europe. No, no, Europe, no. Show me Spain, only Spain. No, no, show me uh, Valladolid. No, no, show me the street. No, show me the home. And the, this methodology allows us to navigate without losing track of where we come from and where we are going to. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter, for your question. Thank you. Okay. Well, that, that's uh, that, that, that's all for today. I think that was that was one of the, the best and most um, so certainly one of the, the most energetic presentations I've seen, Jose, <laughs> and uh, and really um, and, and a great conversation at the end. So uh, so thank you very much indeed. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks with um, Roger and Jane talking about some work they've done in Manchester on systems approaches within the council, which is, uh, I think, quite, quite, uh, quite extraordinary. So hopefully see you all in two weeks. Uh, okay. Uh... okay.